all the districts in the country, our presence is felt today. So there was another one that even came before these two. So as soon as we saw it, we we strengthened our engagement with the, our stakeholders. So I think last week or so, we went around the market centers, all the places that we have been engaging. We spoke to them and then we did the corrections. Even yesterday, I was at Makion Church of Pentecost. We spoke to them and you know, the nationwide, we are on the grounds educating people on the, the, the dire consequences of this misinformation and disinformation. So we are on the ground educating people. How, so how would you say the response is like when you're informing them or educating them on misinformation and disinformation? What is their response like? What are you able to pick from what, what, what you're doing with them? Well, some of them, a handful, when you, you know, when, when you engage, when we engage them, some of them were saying, okay, is that the case? Okay, then um, if that is what you are saying, then we'll go by what you are saying. So, you know, it is important that we get a credible institution like NCC, we go to the field, and then we speak to people. Mm. You know, there are uh, fact and opinion. So when such issues are being made on air, you know, it's up to the public to decide where to, you know, go. Mm. So we are on the grounds educating people so that they will know the right uh, way to mm. go. Mm. So that's what we've been doing. The work is going to be tough, huh? Yes. <laughs> Archibald, yeah, I'm happy yeah. how you began your your contribution. You know the fact that you don't subscribe to what happened, mm. the fact that you're not happy about it. How do we fix this challenge, this problem we have on our hands? We have 12 days to go to the election from today. How do we ensure that a misinformation or or a disinformation does not create chaos for us as a people? How how do we fix this? David, I think we don't need to throw caution to the wind. It is something that we need to be careful about. And I believe that um, we have to be very careful about such narratives. And um, if today you may think that it was it is going to favor you politically, but it may end up resulting in spoiled ballots mm. and you know situations where people can even not be aware mm. of when the voting is going to happen. Mm. But like you said, I think that now that we are dealing with this matter, we must deal with it and deal with it holistically. Because in the bygone years, parties have benefited from this information. If you quit in the year 2008, who for some <laughs> bank accounts or who ministers, when they won the elections and was going for a position, what did he say? He said these are things that we do on the political terrain. We don't necessarily. But we also had saying where Mahama was said to have had hotels in Dubai and all those things. Just like he claiming to have done free senior high school, Mahama, this year. He claims that he he's not he's the one who implemented he, 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 he introduced and he implemented it. And that he is not true. It's true. It. That oh please, please prof, don't okay, do that. Don't do that. Don't even go there. Don't even go there. Don't even go there. It is not true. Today we're not talking about that. David, 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 what I'm saying is this: that if you have situations where political parties benefit from this disinformation, then you cannot stop the other from doing the same. So if you are dealing with it, that's what I've said. That how do we fix it? We need to be cautious about these narratives. And like my brother from the NC said, I think that. If we can have an executive policy, maybe uh, a bill going to parliament so that some of these things can be placed in it, so that the punity measures are put there, then we would know what that. The what you heard the president yeah, say about president cabinet said. discussion. Yeah, so I think that, that you think that's also a step in the right uh, direction? It is very good. Right. It is very good. If it can come out in the form of a bill, not even a, like an executive policy, but a bill that can go through parliament, that we can have a law to right. moderate and regulate this aspect of our okay. politics, and I okay. think that will help. Okay. Now, now I know that. Prof, you'd like to respond to the free SHS thing. We don't have time. I know. Hold on. <laughs> Just one minute. Hold, hold on, hold on. We don't have time. And I know that you 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 say the progressively free, the whatever. No, let's go there. How do we fix this issue of disinformation? Uh, David. <laughs> you, you, okay. Please indulge me. Thank you. David, the best way to fix this problem is to punish these people. If these people are left to go scot free, you remember during the Munche trip, at the time, the election petition was ongoing. But the Supreme Court judges did not temper justice with mercy. mercy. By the supporters of the NDC were not in support of yes. the action taken. Yes, but still they punished them. Mm. And other people, uh, uh, even before then, you know Sir John also came. Even after their punishment, that's when Sir John 
was also uh, uh, found guilty. Are you quoting was his lawyer at the time? Good. Yeah. Yes. What we found is real yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You see, just imagine if the Minty three were not hauled before the Supreme Court. But were they not pardoned? They, they were pardoned, but please, you know what? Who pardoned them? Is that what? Who pardoned them? John Mahama. So that tells you that we didn't allow the laws to work. Now, if Mahama had not won that the election, and this action, the sentence had taken, they would have served their full sentence. Please, but you also know that. Do you know that? Sir John could have equally gone to jail like me is going to jail. It's possible. So the question is, let us not go there because you said I don't have time. But what I'm trying to let you know is that. <laughs> for, for, for. Yes, boy. <laughs> what I want you to know is that this gentleman, what they have done, we are trying to find so many ways of equalizing, as my brother has nicely done. But my brother, Ajibo, you see, they cannot be equalized. There's a huge inequality in how you intend to equalize this matter. What I would want to tell you is that, one, this your two communicators are extremely irresponsible, number one. Number two, they are trying to become nation wreckers. Because this thing that they have done could have cost, I mean, cut fire. And that is when you will see the police and everybody coming in there. But you see, let me tell you something. All these things are happening because certain offenses that need to be punished are rewarded. This Archibald made mention of what Sami Jinfi said in the uh, district. Look, in this country, if we are in a proper law functioning country, under no circumstance, the man who let people to a way also as go to cause people's life will be promoted to this position. We are, we are, we are just not being fair to ourselves two as two a country. Zero, eight, three, now, this five, man nine, gets promoted zero, three, two, to the zero, central eight, command three, five, where nine, seven, and zero, the, three, the two, heart two, of zero, the nation eight, is. Three, five, nine, eight. Please. The numbers to call us on 